It's on, it only gets that way. The temperature only rises when we forget that we have the power of God in us. That's the only time your block will get hot because the, the, the fiery darts are definitely extinguished by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now let's go to, let's go to the meat of our uh, text today. Turn with me to Job, right before Psalms. Right before Psalms. So we just established in Jude where the heat is occurring on our blocks and on everyone who is on this planet who lives in a particular area who is going through any situation is experiencing this same thing. There's nothing new under the sun. The devil's tricks have been going on since the beginning of time. They have not ceased. He is continually doing what he does best, seeking to destroy the lives of those who are Christians and of course not Christians. If you're not a Christian, he's, he's already got you in his possession. You've already been in a position to where you are comfortable on that hot block, where heat is normal to you. So it no longer affects you anymore. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't mind worshiping somewhere even though someone may present to you the truth. And this is to those who are not in the body of Christ because we experience that often, lots of times when we're experiencing, hey, God has one, one body, and it says it right here, there's no dispute that one means one. But we have others that say it doesn't matter where you work, where you worship. You can worship at the place of your choice. You can have many, but the, the Bible says that the church is the bride of Christ, and there's one church, so there should be one bride. So if you're saying I can go anywhere I want and the church is any church around here, that means that God or Christ is a spiritual adulterer because he has many wives. It doesn't make sense. And of course that is, that's normal. It's common for us to know and understand that language, but we like to do things that are comfortable, which the devil has of course done his job by getting us acclimated and accustomed and desensitized to heat. So it no longer affects us anymore. But we who are in the body of Christ have to use that power of the Holy Spirit that guides us into all truth to find a way to where we can get to those lost souls. Because we're on the struggling end. And sometimes it seems like those who aren't in the body are not having that many problems. But we who are in the body are dealing with more problems. So it almost looks favorable to be on the other side as some, in some cases. But as Job did, he did not waver in his faith. He stayed faithful through the end, regardless of what temptations came about him. He trusted, he feared God with that reverence that made him one who God claimed was one who was after his own heart, like Noah was perfect in all of his uh, community as well. So turn with me to, to the book of Job. And for the sake of time, I'll expedite and we'll start down at <clears throat> At verse, we'll start at verse 6. But prior to that, when, when the book of uh, Job begins, the dialogue starts with giving uh, the, the excerpt of all that Job had, his possessions, his wealth, and it gives a good description of his position and status in the community there. And uh, let me, uh, now I'll read uh, verse 1 right here. And your Bible, of course, is going to read something different. The New Living Translation, of course, we typically read the, the King James Version to get that more <coughs> accurate description. But the way the words are, are used here paint a, a better picture than the King James does. There was a man named Job who lived in the land of Uz. He was blameless, a man of complete integrity. He feared God and stayed away from evil. He stayed away from evil. Means he kept his block was cool. He did not quench the Holy Spirit. He was quenching those fiery darts. He didn't allow temptation to get to him. He didn't allow things and circumstances to determine how his trust was towards the Father in heaven. He always maintained his composure to the point where he stayed favorable in the sight of God. Because of course the Bible is written by God. It was inspired by God through men. So they're given an account that God has given them to give. So we know that this is something that God knows 
and has given us for an example so that we can also have something to aspire to just as we do as my brother preached this morning about what Christ has done for us that we would be adopted into that family of God. Verse 6, and here we go. One day, the angels came, and it may say the sons of God in the King James, I believe. It says, they came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan, the accuser, came with them. Where, and excuse me, came with them. And God says, God's reply is, where have you come from? Not that God didn't know where Satan was, was coming from. The Lord asked Satan. And Satan answered the Lord and says, I have been going back and forth across the earth. <laughs> and this one says, watching everything that's going on. So if we, if we, look, at, if we look at this globe, and we, we know the earth is large beyond our, by our own scope of thinking. We couldn't imagine how large it is. We just know it's, it's big. It's, it's big. We, we can barely even travel it, and many people have tried to. But Satan does this all the time. Not by himself, but if we read, if we read Mark 5 and, and 6, y'all remember the, uh, we were talking about this last week, where um, the, the man who was possessed with those demons... And, uh, and he said, and Jesus asked him, who are you? He says, my name is Legion. We are many. So his name, his, singular, if you go back and read that account, you can break down those personal pronouns. I was going back and forth because there was one man there, and he asked who he was. But who was speaking was the devil himself. But it wasn't the devil singular. It was the devil coming with his forces with his power. So when he cast him into, into those swine, there were about 2,000 swine. So I can just deduce from legion, the word legion, legion, we are many, there's about 2,000 devils that can possess your thought process, that can bring torches, that can pull those fiery darts and aim them at you. 2,000 at one time, to where you're in a position like that man who was possessed, had, it was out of his right mind. Just insane would be, today he would be in a crazy house somewhere. He would be detained. But in this situation, we, we want to look and we want to make sure it's, it's realistic that when it says that the sons of God or the angels presented themselves before the Lord, this was not a heavenly council meeting. Like the devil is walking around the earth, right? Going to and fro. And this is, seems like, and I'm just getting it straight because someone else might have given y'all information or some conjecture might be out there that the devil is going to meet with God in heaven and having this conversation and then coming back down to earth. But want us to know, be on the same page as that's not the case. Y'all remember saying, saying he got kicked out of heaven. Right? He's not allowed to come back whenever he wants to just to ask questions. You got kicked out. He got kicked out. He's, he's not there. He's, where have you been? Walking to and fro. So he's meeting. Do we meet with God, church? Do we? I, I hope the answer is a resounding yes. Because every time you come in to worship, you should be coming to meet God. Not to hear a sermon per se, but to come in the presence, just like this says, into the presence of God and his people. The sons of God could also be attributed to those who are his children who worship him. There are a whole bunch of different things that this could go to, but besides all that, let's continue with this lesson so I won't get distracted like y'all always distract me during these sermons. And Satan answered and said, I've been going back and forth across the earth watching everything that is going on. Then the Lord said, then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Joseph? He's the finest man in the earth. A man of complete integrity. And he fears God. And he will he will not have anything to do with evil. And this is paraphrased, watered down a lot, you know, in English in comparison to the King James. But it paints a, it paints a good picture. So let's, let's go back over that scripture really quick. It says, then the Lord asked Satan, and watch this, watch, watch how we use this. Because this is something that occurs constantly <laughs> until this very moment. This is occurring, this very moment, this kind of questioning 
this kind of um, presentation before the Lord is happening right now. This is a heavenly or um, some spiritual things that are occurring that we're unaware of. Job, as we were reading uh, above that, you know, he has seven sons. He's living his life as a family man. Unbeknownst to Job, there's a conversation being had about him, a spiritual conversation that's being had about him. He doesn't know. He's living sumptuously. He has everything that he needs. He's wealthy. Family's doing good. Kids are healthy. Everybody in the neighborhood respects him. But there's a conversation being had about him and his faith. Let's read that again. I don't know if y'all saw that. Y'all missed something in here. I think y'all mispronounced some of these words. <laughs> it says, Then the Lord asked Satan, He says, Have you noticed my servant, Melvin? Have you noticed my servant, Dietra? Have you noticed my servant, Jim, have you noticed my servant Sakina? Have you noticed my servant Tracy? I don't think he has. I don't think he has. Have you noticed my servant Yvette? Have you noticed those Brown brothers? Y'all, y'all, have y'all seen the picture? See the picture here? That conversation has been had about you. So the, res the response or the reply from God, we would hope and pray, is the same that he given when he responded to Satan. Y'all know what that response was this. <clears throat> that put your name there. A man or woman of, a, of complete integrity, who fears God, and who will have nothing to do with evil. You put your name there. That's how it should fall. That's the conversation that you should pray that God is having about you. Amen. When the devil comes. Yeah, look, the devil is doing his con. If we go, we can go to St. Corinthians and you know where um, uh, the devil was asking to sift. You know, in the book of Luke, he was asking to sift. So he's going, he's constantly asking, how can I get this, this servant of yours? And in this situation, it, it, it looked in my, when I was looking at it, it seemed like Satan's walking around to and fro, just watching, see what happened. I mean, he noticed Job. Mm -hmm. So God said, well, did you consider Job? Yeah, I kept going. Mm -hmm. Let's see why he kept going. Let's see why he kept going. And Satan replied to the Lord, verse 9, he says, yes, Job fears God, but not without good reason. Mm -hmm. And yours, yours has, yours says something a little different. Yeah, yeah, it says, You're, but not without good reason. Mm -hmm. You have always protected him mm -hmm. and his home and his property from harm. You have made him prosperous in everything he does. Thank God. Look at how rich he is. But take away everything he has, and he surely will curse you to your face. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Satan sees how blessed you are. Right? Well, you don't. That's how we are, church. We don't see how blessed we are. Mm -hmm. Amen. We take for granted the blessings that God has given us. Satan knows it. He's not going to test. He's not going to test those who are blessed. Or let me say this: He's not going to test those who know they're blessed, because you can be blessed and be unaware of it. Just like this conversation is happening, we're unaware of that, and we act the same way about our blessings, unaware. Because if you act blessed. It says Job was rich. Mm -hmm. He had animals and things like that. Well, we have an inheritance that we heard about this morning. We were heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The promise that was given to us this morning, right? But it is not tangible. I cannot touch that right now. So in other words, it's not really applicable to me. It sounds good on paper. <laughs> but we really don't think that that's occurring. We don't really believe that there's something in heaven because Job feared God. And God replied to Satan that he knew that Job believed in his blessings mm -hmm. by saying, hey, try him. Because that's my, that's my boy down there. Mm -hmm. Try Job. That's, 
Say that about me. What can I do to be in Job's shoes? To walk in those shoes. That's where I need to be. Amen. That's where I need to check myself Amen. so I can be in a position to where I know that when something occurs in my life that seems to be like, uh, it's tough to deal with. Remember that word in Ephesians 2, 4? Mm, but God. But God. <laughs> I had to get me out of it. Amen. Job took himself out of the picture. He said, I fear God. No matter what happens, what befalls me, God has me. And guess what? Satan knows that. Church, that's good news. Mm -hmm. If you know it, then Satan knows you know it. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get tested and fail. But you know what? Since the devil is going to try us, <laughs> and it's going to get tough, and we, we know it because we've experienced tough times, and sometimes we don't feel successful on the other side of it, that has wavered our faith. Mm -hmm. So we look forward to another situation. This is where we get. If you get on my last nerve, mm. you know, yeah, I changed. <laughs> I'm a Christian. I ain't been transformed. But I changed because I'm a Christian and I'm walking new. Converted. <laughs> but I do have that last nerve you can get on. I have that last nerve you can get on. And Job, he didn't have that condition. No matter what situation came about, he stayed faithful and true. Yes, it hurts. It's painful to be drugged through something that's debilitating to you, that is demeaning to you, mm -hmm. that puts you, makes you feel bad, less than a woman, less than a man. It, yes, it does. But on the other side of all this, Amen. it's just for a season. Mm -hmm. right. We're trying to reap eternal life with God the Father forever. Mm -hmm. The little trials and temptations that it's just for a moment. The light of fiction. Yeah. It's only for a moment. I didn't say that. That's what God says. Amen. Job believed the word of God. You should also. We should also be in that position where we believe every word that proceeded out of the words of God, out of the mouth of God. We should be in that position where it doesn't matter. We're not going to waver. Let's keep reading a little bit of this. Verse 9, it says, the same reply, yes, Job fears God, but not without good reason. Mm -hmm. You've always protected him and his home and his property from harm. You have made him prosperous in everything he does. Look at how rich he is. But take away everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. And Jesus, after God, is like, okay, I'll let you have him. I'll let you test him. Ask my boy, I'll let you test him. I know, what he, I know what's in him. Just like we should know what's in us. Amen. Before we were Christians, we were led by the forces and spiritual wickedness of the world. Amen. But after we realized the position that we're the lost state that we were in, and we went down into that watery grave of baptism, mm -hmm. and then we came up into that newness of life, we were endued with power. Amen. From on high within. Do y'all remember the apostles in, in Acts 8 where Jesus told them to wait for the power that will come? We have that same power. That power was the Holy Spirit. You know, that God gives those, he gives it in measure. Mm -hmm. Jesus has it without measure. Mm -hmm. But he gives it to men with measure. Some men have, back then, the limitation where they can speak in other languages and mm -hmm. they can heal the people they touched and things of that nature. But God gave us the spirit of power as well. Amen. And the main purpose for that power is to lead us into all truth so that we can defend ourselves with the word of God from all the evil temptations and all the fiery darts that are cast down from that spiritual warfare that happens, Ephesians 6. Mm -hmm. It's occurring all the time. But we're equipped with the armor of God, being led by the spirit of God. But we don't, we don't see none of that, so we don't believe it. So we're in a situation where we need Job we need our brother Job, brother in Christ. We need him to give us an example of how to stay faithful. That's Amen. what we need. Amen. So God pr pr provided for us. This is his provision to give us some knowledge, some education about how he operates. Mm -hmm. Because we think what we go through is bad. Hmm. Let's check out Job. Let's see what Job had to endure and see if he caved in. <clears throat> in verse 12, he said, all right, you may test him. The Lord said unto Satan. Do whatever you want with him and everything he possesses, but don't harm him physically. There's that chain. See that chain? God has it, that chain on choke. 
So he can only go so far. He, he can only go so far. So thank God for that. You know, just look at it as that, <laughs> that, that, that worldly situation, and I'm trying to get away from worldly, that situation that we're dealing with, the regular dog, but visualize those, those spiritual, that spiritual wickedness that's testing you. When you are at work, when you're at home and you don't feel like doing something, the kids are getting on your nerves, someone's not doing what you would like them to do, you're getting tested. You get, that's a small test, but you're getting tested, but those things get on our nerves. Those little things, you didn't clean the dishes right. You didn't take the trash out. And we all beside ourselves over little things like that. Now I end up arguing with what well, this happened last week. Now I'm a big argument over the trash that I've been taking out. So minuscule. We're not going through anything. Nothing in comparison to this example Brother Joe is about to show us. Satan left the presence of, uh, of the Lord. Verse 13, it says, One day Job, his sons and daughters were, were dining in the, at the oldest brother's house. A messenger arrived at Job's home with this news. Your oxen were plowing, Job, with the donkeys feeding beside them. Job, yeah, I know that's what they do. My oxen don't they in the field. Yeah, so what? They eating. Okay. When the Sabaeans... Okay, when the Sabaeans uh, uh, raided us, they stole all the animals and killed all the farmhands. And I am the only one who escaped to tell you. <laughs> so Job is, okay, somebody, they, they killed my, my servants out there and they took all my animals, all right? Okay, so that's, that's, that's not good news. Verse 16 says, while he was still speaking, another messenger came. So he had two people in front of Job. While he was still speaking, another messenger arrived at, with this news. The fire of God has fallen from heaven and burned up your sheep and all the shepherds. And I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. And while he was still speaking, a third messenger arrived with this news. Three, three, three bands of Chaldean raiders have stolen your camels and killed your servants, and I'm the only one to come and tell you. Continuing, still going. While he was still speaking, yet another messenger arrived with this news. Your sons and daughters is getting closer. There was animals and his servants were dying out there. And you know, of course, that's, that's sad news. You wouldn't wish that upon anyone for something close to them or something that equals their livelihood to be um, destroyed or touched. You wouldn't want that. But he's getting a little closer. But the meanwhile, look at this. Satan is operating. This is going on. This conversation happened in the presence of God. And Satan is now doing, going about his test. This is him walking around to and fro, performing his test. Testing to see if Job's faith is what he claims it to be. He's actually testing that hedge because he mentioned earlier that, yeah, I, I saw Job, but you got that hedge around him. If you take that hedge off him, let's see if he can, if he can stand for himself. <clears throat> let's keep going. So while he was still speaking, and uh, verse 18, while he was still speaking, another messenger arrived with this news. Your sons and daughters were, were feasting in their oldest brother's home, and suddenly a powerful wind swept in from the desert and hit the house on all sides. Hmm. The house collapsed. And all your children are dead. Hmm. And I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Job stood up and tore his robe in grief. Then he shaved his head and fell to the ground before God. And he said, I came naked from my mother's womb and I will be stripped of everything when I die. The Lord gave me everything I had, and the Lord has taken it away. And look at those last words. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. This is some, this is some, some terrible news. I, I, could, I, I couldn't take that, me personally. And maybe I'm just weak like that. But that would destroy me that I'm, I'm gonna say something to somebody. I'm gonna be mad at someone. I'm going to be beside myself. Hey, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I think I'm a pretty calm, relaxed person, but all that stuff happening back to back, 
that's that's rough to deal with. And we don't we don't see it because we wake up with our family every day. And we assume to do so the next day. We just take it for granted that we're gonna wake up and brush our teeth the same way our kids gonna be in their room and life is gonna happen as it normally has happened. And Job was in that same position until this trial came to him. And now his faith is being tested. Could we be in that situation? Could you be in a situation where you lose your loved ones at one time mm. and still remain faithful to God? Could you lose your job, your family, and still say, you know what, I'm showing up for Wednesday night service. I'm showing up for Sunday morning and Sunday evening service. Think about it, because you're going to be sad. You're going to feel like, I need to grieve. And everybody needs to understand that I need to grieve. I need time for myself. You're going to be in that position. You want to be tested in this way, the same way that Job was tested. We, and it looks differently. And it goes on, the next day, Job was still tested again. And then he got to his, his body. He said, skin for skin, will a man then consider his, his faith or Will it mean he'll start considering something different now? Yeah, that was his family and his, his possessions and things like that. But let me start messing with his body. You know, when you hurt him, and Job had boils and all kind of things, and it disfigured him to a way that people didn't recognize who he was. He was that disfigured. But all the while, Job remained faithful. Mm -hmm. Let's start to a familiar scripture. We're almost done right here. Pretty simple lesson, church. And I hope that we, we see the picture and this heavenly conversation that continues to happen on a, it continues to happen. It's a continual conversation. You're being tested continually. And at the times you're not, it's just not that season. It's just for a moment that you'll be tested. But it may not even seem like a test if you have the faith of Job. Amen. Job didn't consider that test. Amen. He was faithful to the end. That didn't phase him. Yeah, it was, it was turmoil. And what he did was, hey, I'm going to worship God. That's what he did. His position was total worship. I don't have my, my family, my kids are gone. He still had his wife. His kids are gone, my possessions are gone. But let me go worship God. Let me go let God know that even though it seems like things have turned for the worse, those things don't matter to me. I didn't come here with them. That was what Joe said. I didn't have none of that stuff to begin with. Mm -hmm. When I came out the womb, I was broke. Yeah. I, I couldn't get a job, I was a baby. Amen. He didn't have nothing. And he said, I'm going to return back the same way. I ain't going to have nothing when I go back. Mm -hmm. So why am I clinging and allowing these circumstances, and especially possessions, possess me? Mm -hmm. Why do we do that? Why do we let that? My money. I can only give this much. It feels like uh, the money. Something. You can't take that with you. You can't spend that in heaven. You're not even going to have hands. You're going to be a spirit. No pockets, no hands. <laughs> You're not going to be able to take none of that stuff. This is a spiritual event that's occurring. Of course, we're here walking on the planet. But there's another world that we're a part of, and it's a spiritual world. It's happening. And even though we don't see it, it's occurring. Ask yourself when you get in that next situation where you're looking at the person you love and, you're, and you don't like who they are at that time. Why is that? You love, them. You love that person. You married that person. That's your kid. That's your child. Why would you look at them like that? Why would you think that, oh, I can't stand what is that? Where'd that come from? Sam, he asked, can he do that to you? Can he make you feel in a way that's ill towards someone you love? Love don't do that. Mm -hmm. Love has no ill towards his neighbor. Love don't act that way. Amen. We must forget or something's going on here. Are we not fearing God the way Job is? Something is happening to make us change our mind in a blink of a moment. Because that's to me, that's how all this stuff happened. One person came, hey, guess what? Your house is filled and all your horses are going. Hey, hey, Joe, what you, what you want? Hey, your house is just burned. Your other house burned up, and now your neighbors are going. And somebody else came, what? What are y'all What are y'all doing? Why, why are y'all coming up all of a sudden? And I just got to tell you, Joe, your kids, man, all your kids are gone. All this, come on, y'all, y'all kidding. All this stuff just happened just now. Y'all playing. He stayed cool. Joe was cool under the pressure. Because his thought process, it was not wrapped up in material. Amen. This planet mm -hmm. it was not wrapped up in this planet. Good point. 
heavenly things were occurring. And that's what Job's mind was. It was on God, the Father in heaven, and the blessings that God had given him. Job knew if I came in here with nothing and I got some, I didn't get that by myself. Mm -hmm. He recognized where all of his blessings had come from. Are we at that scripture? Go ahead and read that scripture for me. Uh, first, uh, first Corinthians. <coughs> we got it. First Corinthians ten thirteen. We'll close on this. We're gonna have several scriptures which I'll make go along with y'all. So just common to man. Has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. man. But God is faithful. Hold on a second. Say it started over again. Because you know what? I found that word again, y'all. I found it again. Start over again. There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Here we go. But God. Amen. <laughs> Every time, look, but the second, look, Ephesians 2, it says, but God, who is rich in mercy. Mm -hmm. But look at what else God, but God. He stops. All this stuff is going on. All this bad stuff is happening. And all of a sudden, the sin is, it continues with a comma. But God. Amen. Brand new situation. He changed the whole mindset. Yeah. Now, I was going to, all the temptation is going to happen. Guess what? It's been happening for all these years. Yeah. Oh, oh, change your mindset. But God. But God. Hold on. I'm not thinking about that no more because God is in the position to be in our presence. And just like we're in his presence, God is always here. We have to recognize that we're conducting and moving and we have our very being mm -hmm. in the presence of God. Amen. You, you conduct, you're conducting, you're working as a workman for God. You own a job all the time. Your boss is always over your shoulder watching you. Always. Your literal boss, if they were watching you, you would type the fastest you can type. <laughs> you would look as organized as you can look. You would have everything tidied up, looking sharp. Your boss is right there. Yes, because you know I get promotion, I look good, they talk good about me. You would do that, but for God? Mm. Who is rich in mercy? God, God, that. God who has adopted you. Hey, I want you to be in my family. Well, now think about that. Because we like this planet stuff. We like things on the planet. Because if you see it, 22 people with big wheels and nice shiny cars and vehicles and stuff that they can't take with them. For some reason that just stopped going off. But that says right here, finish that sentence for me. But God is faithful. He is faithful. Who will not, not tempt you. For you to be tempted above. That you are able. That's right. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape. Amen. That he may be able to bear. Amen. Y'all see that church? Yeah. Amen. Look, God is the same today, same yesterday, mm -hmm. and forever. He's always been like, look, when Job was going through that, this scripture was in effect. Well, that scripture was in effect. He didn't give Job any more than Job can handle. He knew Job can handle that. Mm -hmm. Where's your faith? All right. Where's your faith? You only gonna be tested with things on the level of your faith. That's all he's gonna. He's gonna give you things on the level of your faith. If you get a trial or a temptation and it seems like it's tough, God thinks you can get through that. Amen. That's. That's good news. That's good news to me. When I was thinking about it, I was like, huh, I was reading that scripture. But look, God is putting things on my level. So if they're on my level, it appears to me on this planet that that's tough to deal with because somebody else told me about a situation that looked like that, and they had a hard time with it. So maybe I should struggle with it. Well, hold on a second. I'm a child of God. Amen. I know where the source of my power comes from. All right. It's not where someone else's comes from. Mm. My faith isn't their faith. That's it. I have the faith that God has put this position, put me in this position to be able to respond in a way that I can be pleasing and acceptable to him. Mm -hmm. That I can be qualified for this salvation. That I can be qualified to do his work. That's what I'm here. I'm a workman for God, for him. He's not going to give me more than I can handle. That's what his word just said. Amen. So whatever you're dealing with, God believes in you. That scripture said, but God, Amen. who is what? Faithful. God's faithful. Yes. So he knows what you can handle. He's not going to put something above your faith, woo, above your faith mm -hmm. that you can't. So if you're not dealing with nothing, man, go, go through something. God wants to see you go, go through something. Job is proving his faith. God knew it beforehand. 
He knew it beforehand that he was going to pass that test. Whatever is, whatever is ailing you, whatever bothers you, whatever gets on your last nerve, look beyond that. Amen. And, and I'm not talking about look beyond.